Hey everybody, uh, my name is Daniel Grotchen. I'm the Cloud Gaming Product Manager. And today I want to talk to you about something really important to us at Cloud for game developers is telling your virtual story and giving the technology to do that and scaling and making your world on a virtual cloud. So a lot of that requires kind of building outside the box. And I want to first kind of go back through the history of how we went from all the way back to cave paintings to current generation technology and next generation technology, we'll actually, which would actually allow us to make immersive technologies have these massive scalable worlds. So from its inception, cave paintings were actually used as a way to tell you the limit of your world. They were, they were made to say there are predators, so don't go here, or here be dragons type of situation. Moving on, we moved on to actually written text that was put onto boxes or actual tablets, so that would be your box in that situation. There was no audio, there was no visual, it was just completely written text. We moved on to things like the Gutenberg Bible, which was made by the printing press, and then you actually had distributed scalable books or stories. This moves on to the TV, which is great except for lacked audio. So we added visual with it and audio, we brought it together, and we developed our first video game, which is called Knots and Crosses back in the early 40s. Moving on, there was the second technical first video game, which was called Space War. The problem with Space War is it was associated with its hardware. So this game was completely tied to its hardware. It didn't scale. If you didn't have this box and the visual and the game itself, there was no way to, just, to have more of these games. That's where the console generation began with lots of different consoles, but Atari is the most popular one that's recognized. What Atari did is allow you to have a console and different stories, if you will, with these cartridges. You could use the cartridge, have play Asteroids in this case, play uh, Dig Dug or something else like that. So I want to talk about this to kind of go into the technology that, we're, that was from the past and how we moved into what we're going to the future. Essentially what this did is, as I said, the console cartridge relationship made everything kind of localized, but at least gave you a chance to have different experiences in different games. A save feature, which was actually implemented back in 87 with The Legend of Zelda, allowed you to actually have a continued story. That way you can actually take a picture of it, if you will. But it was only associated with a character, and it was only limited by as large as the game could be, which back then was very small. There was no generation, had limited instructions, and it was, again, limited to your on-premise local machine. Not to mention that matchmaking probably consisted of you having your friend use your Mad Cat's controller and plug it in for set player two. So the current generation of technology, how we're doing matchmaking and server uh, technology and scaling worlds, is the client-server model, which Mark was kind of going, going over just a second ago. The problem with this is it had stateful services. These services are associated with whatever the character is doing or your, your client is with the server, which means they're bounded together. What this does is it makes a kind of a theme park reset. So if you played World of Warcraft, you go into an instance, and it'd be this great immersive experience, but when you come back out, you go back in and it's a theme park reset. There's no actual world being distributed and scaled and persistent. So a lot of this is also leveraged by currently on on-premise uh, data centers. So this is where we kind of go into what I want to talk about today, which is the next generation technology of the entity component model, which was made early, famous in the early 70s. The thing with this model is we didn't have cloud computing technology to scale all this. So recently we partnered with a company called Improbable, and they have this technology called Spatial OS, which allows you to make distributed operating systems in the cloud. What it does is a whole entire concept of client physics and logic. It separates out into many workers. These workers can then individually scale and make massively scalable worlds that are actually persistent, which is to say the world is living when you're not playing it, and you can still live when you come into the game. It makes stateless services allows for actual procedural generation. You can actually have worlds actually keep scaling and scaling, technically limitless, as long as you can afford the cloud bill. And also it gives you the ability to leverage the cloud. The game called Worlds Adrift built on their technology. What this allows you to do is have actual worlds whenever you can interact with it, since you've separated all these dynamics of client and logic and physics. If this ship crashes into the actual planet or that structure, it will be destroyed in the world. It won't reset. It'll actually have a story to itself, the whole entire world. Why is this interesting to us is it allows us to take snapshots of these states. It allows us to do logging and, and real-time telemetry on it. And it lets us make machine learning models out of that. So when you're watching a game with the League of Legends tournament last year for 2016 or 2017, it allows you to go back and see how you would have done in that situation by associating AI models, machine learning models, because you have these persistent worlds that are con con constantly generated. Another thing we're doing, too, is looking at leveraging chipsets. So physics and your logic and client using graphics processing Unix CPU and your TPUs, which will be coming out soon. What's interesting about that is it allows you to actually have games at scale, and then depending on the hardware you're using, it won't matter, because you can have games that can scale forever, and it won't matter about the technology you're using. So we'll actually be talking more about what Mark Mandel talked about, uh, game server scaling, big data analytics, 
And as far as the improbable relationship we have for spatialist technology, if you're interested, please approach us or um, myself or Mark Mandel, and I will be followed by Louder. Thank you.